hello guys welcome to another video of circuit digest in this video we are going to get started with our msp430 launchpad from texas instrument so this is a value line development tool provided by texas instruments to get started with the ic's of ti and explore the, their programming environment so let's open the box and see what's inside this and know how the board looks like and what should be used in what way and we will also upload a small blink program and check if the board is working properly so in this series of tutorials we will be using the energia ide so that it's easy for beginners to get started with the normal one which is used for ti programming is the ccs which is code composer studio but we will get on to it later now let's open the box and we are greeted with a small pamphlet and we have our shiny red board inside here. So as you can see I have already opened the cover which is static proof cover to protect the board from static electricity i already opened it so it's an open state but you will get a neat package and your board will look something like this so let's get on to this board later after exploring all the components inside we will also get few stickers uh, which is cool and we will also get another ic inside this compartment you will get another ic a crystal oscillator and a programming wire let's get everything out and let's start with the pamphlet here meet the launch pad and you will have all the instructions on getting started with this board and as you can see the default one used will be code composer studio but for the purpose of keeping our learning curve simple we will be using energia and let's come come back to this but let's explore the board for now so as you can see it's a shiny red board people who have used Arduino would find it very much similar to the Arduino Uno uh, with all these packaging and pinouts reset buttons LEDs and all those stuff but let's start exploring it right from the top left corner so on the left corner you have the usb emulator which is used to program this ic as well as power this ic and if you take a closer look you can see that the board is divided into two parts so there is a dotted line here everything above the dotted line is your emulation region and everything below the dotted line is your programming region so everything above this dotted line is used to send the program from your laptop to this IC and also to get some debugging information back to the laptop but you can just think it off like this is your programmer and this is your microcontroller area and we also have a power LED here as I said earlier this can program as well as power the IC so as soon as you power it this LED is a green color LED which will go on once this board is powered and uh, you have some jumper pins over here which is used to communicate to this IC so there are a lot of ways to program an IC the default way is to use this emulation setup you can also use a JTAG and there are also some other third party boards to develop this but you can think these pins as a bridge between this section of the board and this section of the board so these pins can be removed like this all the pins can be removed and this programming section alone can be used for some other development board but for now let's close everything now this is how it would be in the default state and one more thing that you have to look about is this area on the sill screen of this board you can see two symbols which states software reward and hardware reward so if these two pins are connected vertically then it means this IC will work using the hardware reward and if they are connected parallelly or horizontally then it means that this IC would work using the software reward which would also be explained in our pamphlet here. 
so as you can see for hardware you want it will be connected in this way it will be connected in this way for hardware you want and for software you want it will be connected in this way so right now as you can see I have connected it vertically to use my hardware you want but it's up to you so as we get along with program we'll understand what is software you want what is hardware you want and stuff but for now just to know what it is we I'm just telling you the stuff and here we have the option for crystal oscillator so as I told you we also get a 32 kilohertz micro crystal as you can see it's a 32.768 kilohertz crystal oscillator along with this package this tiny thing so you can solder this crystal over here which is completely optional this can be done only if you are in need of some high uh, computational speed and if your project requires some specific timing operations then you can think about adding that crystal otherwise for beginners it's completely fine to work without the crystal because the IC itself has an internal crystal oscillator now coming down this IC there are two ICs that can be uh, programmed with this board actually there are many ICs that can be programmed with this board but uh, when you purchase this kit you will be given two ICs one IC is your MSP 430G2553 so as you can see this is your G2553 and the other IC comes in your package which is uh, MSP 430G2452 if you can look at it it's 452 so uh, both the ICs are 20 pin packages but there are some difference in both these ICs just turn the box and you will see what all is included in the box and if I zoom in you can see the name of both the ICs the one is the first one would be 452 which is which comes in this cover and the other one is 2553 which comes with the board so as you can see the one that's on the board has 16 KB flash, 512 bytes RAM, 16 GPIO with two 16-bit timers, watchdog timer, brownout reset, and uh, communication protocols like SPA, UART, IT, I2C, and a uh, 8-bit sorry a 10-bit 8-channel ADC 8-channel comparator and and capacitive touch I/O module. We will be seeing how to use all these ADCs, watchdog timers, brownout resets, all these communication protocols in the upcoming tutorials. But for now, let's understand that the 2553 IC, which is on your board, has more options and more flash memory and RAM compared to the other one, which is in this package. So we will be using this IC for all our tutorial series and we'll explore how to use it in the next video and all those stuff so coming to this section we have some cool things to play with in this area so let's start from the right we have a ground pin two ground pins and one vcc pin so suppose if you have completed programming this board and you want it to run through a battery you can just connect the positive terminal of the battery to VCC and the negative to the ground and the board and the microcontroller would get supply from the battery and we have a reset switch which when pressed would reset the controller obviously and your program would start executing right from the top and over here we have some IO devices to play with so we have two LEDs LED 1 and LED 2. LED 1 is a red color LED and LED 2 is a green color LED which is connected to the pins P1.0 and P1.6 respectively. So P1.0 is your second pin over here and P1.6 can be found over here. So these two LEDs are connected to the microcontroller by default through these two pins. If you want to remove the LEDs, you can remove these pins. But when it is connected, you can just program your uh, controller and check if the LEDs are working as per the program, just like the sample LED on your Arduino boards. Apart from that, we also have an input device, which is a push button. As you can see here, this push button is connected to P1.3. So whenever you push this, the pin will be held to ground. So these are the input and output devices that comes by default on the board. So let's stop here for now. Go back to our laptops, download the Energia IDE, 
and try uploading a sample blink program to this board and check how easy it is to program this board and to build projects with it so let's move on to a laptop so now i am on my laptop screen and on the default download page of the energia so just head on to energia.nu slash download download slash and you will be greeted with the interface and you can download the windows version or whatever operating system it is but if you are using the msp430 launchpad it doesn't support any other operating system other than windows so most probably you would be downloading the windows version of energia and just download the zip file once you click on it you can see the download would begin and the size of the file is nearly about 161 mb so i have already downloaded it once you download it extract the package and when you extract you will get a folder of energia along with the version number so my version is 1.6.10 and just open it and here you will find the application so energy application launch it and the application would be launched so this id the energy id would be very much similar to the Arduino id because both are developed using the processing platform so you can see the icons the interface the program everything is very very similar to Arduino so on the top left you can see the verify button to compile the program the upload button to upload the program and over here we have the debugging tool which is a serial monitor so let's connect the board to a computer and upload a sample program so before we do that we have to make two changes one thing would be to select the correct board which is on the tools board and you should select the MSP EXP 430G2553 because that is the IC that's currently present on our board. And then uh, you can launch this Blink program by selecting File, Examples, Basics, and Blink. When you select Blink, this sample Blink program will be launched. Now let's connect the MSP board to a laptop and check if it is being discovered by your laptop. Okay, now I have connected the board and you can check if the board is discovered by your laptop or computer by heading into the device manager in your device manager just get into ports com and lpt and you can find msp430 application uart is connected to com4 so this means your device has been successfully connected make a note to which com port is connected to mine is connected to com4 once that's ensured select the appropriate com under tools port and com so once this is done just click on your upload button and your sketch should get compiled and you should see done uploading here we get some warnings which can be ignored and then uploading and done uploading so when it shows done uploading it means that your program has been successfully uploaded now let's go back to our hardware and check if the program is working that is we should notice a red color LED blinking which is the default LED if you want to know how this program works what line is used to perform what action and more stuff like that you can head on to the link in the description of this video and you can learn all those stuff another uh, possible thing that could happen is that you might get an error while trying to upload it which is most likely because of a problem in the IDE to also to know how to find this error you can check the link in the description of this video which will tell you how to get rid of this error so now let's go to the hardware if your program is successfully uploaded we should have see we should see the LED blinking on it so let's go to the hardware now okay now our blink program is uploaded let's power the board and as we can see the LED here is blinking so this LED indicates that the power is on and this LED which is connected to P1.0 that is the second pin is blinking here so 
so this is how the project works guys soon we will be exploring all the functionalities of this board through the energy id so stay tuned and the link in the description of this video will help you to learn about this board as well as the upcoming tutorials thanks for watching